Welcome back subscribers and hello YouTube viewers. On this occasion we're off to Smeaton. Smeaton is a rural town in the state of Victoria, Australia, near the town of Creswick and 131 kilometres or 81 miles northwest of the state capital, Melbourne. The town was founded by Scottish settler Captain John Hepburn, who was a colonial squatter in the 1840s. Hepburn held under government license about 20,000 acres for his sheep and cattle run, which he drove overland from Sydney. Smeaton, in colonial times, was once home to seven hotels, two bakeries, two banks, and various shops. Now, only the Smeaton Hotel, known as the Cumberland Remains of the shopping area, providing locals and travellers alike a cold drink and a warm meal. Anderson's Mill was constructed in 1861-62 by John Anderson to mill flour and later oats. The Smeaton Anderson's Mill was a large producer until wheat farming moved to the Wimmera area, but continued for several decades until 1957. Smeaton Post Office opened on the 21st of June 1860 and closed in 1993. The local primary school was opened in 1861, succumbed to dwindling student numbers and closed at the end of the 2013 school year in December. There were 12 students in the final year. Smeaton is now home to two large seed and grain processors, one of which is a very large exporter of value-added pulses, grains and seeds, and a new oat mill to process an additional 60,000 tonnes of oats a year. Today, the district's farming is mixed pastoral and cereal, and back in 1910, plans for a 19 turbo wind farm in Smeaton was abandoned. So without further ado, let's check out the sights and sounds of Smeaton. Now just a reminder, as per usual, all credits and references will be in the description below. So if you seek further information and where I sourced all this information, just look there. Well, at one stage, this school was extremely busy. But unfortunately, not anymore. I'm assuming all the local kids must go to another school in another town. So this is where the kids would have come in and parked their bikes up. It seems to be like a community transfer station, the land that the school's on. Uh, it's definitely not a school anymore. Um, and actually, it's a good place where people are putting like uh, artifacts. 
I guess the tennis court has seen better days. And there is a footy oval that's sort of, at least a local farmer or someone's mowing the lawns here, which is terrific. But as you can see, once I get out of this bright sunlight, it's a pretty big school. It wasn't something small. Now here's some cool lighting. Um, looks like on the base of a uh, oxy bottle for welding, but I'm not sure. A lot of cockatoos. We've got sheep in the distance there with the neighbouring property. So these are the school grounds. It's a large area. It's just a shame that the population has an, um, increased for it to be viable again. But there could be other reasons as well. And <laughs> your neighbours to the school footy ground are a bunch of sheep, which is just terrific. So, um, as I've always said, I think the country life for many kids could be quite um, stimulating and a lot of fun compared to, say, suburban uh, primary school in a concrete jungle. So there are a lot of advantages of coming out um, if it's, you know, viable for your circumstances, if you can work from home. Not sure if the computer uh, or the internet is good here. Um, we'll find out pretty quickly. The phone seems to be okay, so once I get the drone up, it'll let me know definitely that um, you can pick up Wi-Fi in this area. Now, how's that for a, uh, a park lamp, a street lamp? For a school. I'm assuming that's being recycled by one of the locals and popped it here. That's fantastic. That is one cool looking set of street lights or pathway park lamps or something. And as you can see, there's a lot of um, items that have been collected by the uh, community, I guess and placed at the school. And I can tell you, right where the school is, there's a, um, a new road, I guess, and there's a lot of land for sale. So I can only imagine that um, this school could be in the future reopened. Um, I'll show you one sec what I mean about the new estate, but they're not like any other estate that you see in some of the um, Townships. This is where, at least if you buy a block of land, you're going to get close to three quarters to an acre um, with the purchase of land. So it's not bumper to bumper houses. But I'll show you what I mean. So here we are on the corner of Frederick Street and Queen Street. That's your view. And everything on the right hand side, all the way down where you see the new street lights. They've got driveways already established and vacant land for sale. So if that gets bought up, houses built, and as I said, you're getting something, I think it's something like, I read the board there, it said three quarters to maybe an acre of land, which is fantastic. And the setting of the school is at the very back of the town, away from the major um, road that goes through the town.
Now, once again, um, it's probably going to be better if you hit pause and read the inscription on this information sort of board. But it tells about Captain Hepburn, who was the founder of this town in 1838. And supposedly, this is exactly what he looks like. So this is the community centre and on one side you have the lawn bowls that's in really good condition like this gets used a lot I'd imagine and this is to the other side of the community centre so we've got lawn bowls well maybe the one that you saw earlier isn't the lawn bowls it could be croquet I'm not sure but this one's also well used and patronised. I'm guessing they must have a team, a lot of sponsorship, which is great for a rural town. Got their president parking, secretary parking. Very good. So here I am in the sort of the heart of the town, and we have another memorial to the pioneers of the area and as you see that used to be some sort of store there looks like a private residence on that corner we have something that's also now a private residence i guess it used to be the post office because if you look to the center of the uh, of your tv or phone You'll see the letterbox there, the little red one. And on this side, you have the local hotel. Now, what I will show you is the hours of operation for the, the hotel. So it's Thursday through to Sunday, starting at 4 p.m. and 12 p.m. on the Sunday. I'm imagining that's for the tourists. Once again, I'm sure if you were to have a wedding reception and you gave the owners or the publican as much notice as you can, it'd make a pretty good venue. So here we have the old gas station. It used to be a shell distributor, but no longer. The old Bowser's out the front. So there is a bus service to the area. Um, it'll take you to either Ballarat and on the other side of the road it'll take you to Bendigo. So this is what I'm assuming is the, the old post office. Just this portion. Um, the building on the corner could very well be an old bank but we'll have to check um, hopefully some of the earlier photos historical photos might give us some information about that so here's that corner store now it looks like the front bit could still be turned into some sort of shop let's see if I can get you in there I don't know if that helps or not that's what she looks like from the inside so also at this intersection uh, in the middle of the town we have what I believe a historical home maybe it was a business at one stage maybe it's uh, also could be a bank I don't know um, but to me it looks like just a home that's been well looked after and I can only surmise it's someone's uh, weekend away or maybe even a, an Airbnb. Very well kept. So it's got um, two entrances. It's a little bit unusual for a house. But who's to say? Very good.
So here we are at the Presbyterian Church, founded in 1859. And if you're at all interested, these are the church times uh, for when it um, has a service. Well, the church does sound, stand very proud in the baking sun. So as we can see, there's a stone above that round lead light glass instalment to the church. And it states that it's AD 1860. And I'm only going to guess that this back half's been added on after. Um, it's got modern air conditioning. And I can only surmise once again, it's probably some um, community group that uses it, which makes it very useful to keep the church up and running in reasonably good nick. But there's a lot of lead light around that church. It looks very pretty. So here we are at the Anderson's Mill. Well worth coming out just for this and this alone. So this is just a basic rundown of the Anderson's Mill. Basically, it's a uh, five-story flour and oat mill opened in 1862, which is quite interesting. Now, I do have to say, to all the mills I've been to, this one is just fantastic. And the thing is, you don't see it in the line of sight when you're on the actual main road going through the town so really if you're coming into town um, look for that sign that says Anderson's Mill and you'll be pleasantly surprised so these are your stables as that little sign mentioned and as we come around the back now, I did speak to a chap who lives in this area and he said, and I've forgotten the number, which is terrible, but we're talking of thousands of people that used to work at this mill, which I think is just unbelievable. Uh, I definitely get the drone up for this one. We'll see if we can get up to the top of that chimney, have a bit of a sticky beak down. But this has been really well cared for. And it's a bit of a shame that it... Um, doesn't get publicized enough but as I said you've got to come out this way it's terrific now once again if you go to the behind this sawmill shed uh, there's an information uh, sort of area and this is what you'll find uh, it's pointless me standing here and reading it all out to you it would just take too long um, but it's a good little resource tells you a lot about the mill who owned it um, when it was built, what they did. It's very informative. I'll just give you an idea where I am. So I'm really just to the side of the mill. So here we are at the back of the mill. 
gives you an idea. Obviously, there's a lot more buildings on this property, and these are the ones they've maintained for heritage. This would have to be heritage listed. I'm not even going to look it up. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, probably national and state uh, listed. So here is your water wheel. It's construction in 1861 until 1947 it was being used. And she's made out of metal. That's the only angles I can get at.
here we are nearing the end of this video or presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. and if you did by all means click on that like button or that thumbs up icon. Please consider subscribing. Subscribing does not cost you one cent and it helps out the channel immensely. But most importantly, stay safe, commute safe and have a great day.